Today on Behind the Mystery, we're exploring a rare genetic condition that results in chronically low levels of calcium in the blood and too much calcium in the urine. Well, patients can experience a wide variety of symptoms from muscle cramping to weakness to seizures, even loss of consciousness. Our story begins in Aiken, South Carolina, where we meet Craig, a man living with autosomal dominant hypocalcemia type 1 or ADH1, and his mother, Bonnie, who passionately cared for her son throughout his childhood after losing two children to this condition. Let's go behind the mystery of ADH1. I do remember, um, you know, going to school and I couldn't concentrate. I would get tingling. The cramping was the worst. Just out of the blue, I would just cramp up into a, a fetal position sometimes. My hands would cramp up and um, it, was, it was painful. The Balancing Act met with endocrinologist Dr. Dolores Schoback to understand more about this genetic condition. ADH1 or autosomal dominant hypocalcemia type 1 is a form of genetic hypoparathyroidism. It's a disorder where there's a mutation in the calcium sensing receptor gene and it's really important in the function of the parathyroid glands and in kidney function. This is an autosomal dominant condition. When a patient has ADH type 1, that patient will have low blood calcium level, a high serum phosphorus level. The parathyroid hormone level in the blood is also quite low. The symptoms of ADH1 are particularly troublesome when they include muscle cramping, tension in the muscles, numbness and tingling, particularly around the uh, mouth and lips and in the fingertips and toes. Often difficulty concentrating, focusing, uh, difficulty with their memory and difficulty with day-to-day -day function. When Craig's teacher wanted to hold him back in the first grade due to his trouble focusing, Bonnie searched for a doctor that would take his symptoms seriously. I said, I think he has hypoparathyroidism because his dad has it. He, and I said, but nobody will believe me. And he said, well, we'll just do some blood work. So they ran the calcium and sure enough, Craig, the reason he wasn't paying attention in, in school is because his calcium was too low. They called it idiopathic hypoparathyroidism. This was the diagnosis. And that's when we were introduced to the uh, uh, pediatric endocrinologist. Uh, back in the 90s, um, I was going to a doctor in Augusta, Georgia, and um, he was giving me all the regular uh, calcium and vitamin D, and we were uh, also checking my kidney function, and we were trying to have a happy median between a good calcium and good kidney function. And we were getting the good calcium, but the kidney function was getting worse and worse. Part of the problem with the calcium uh, building up in the kidneys is you get kidney stones. I have uh, what they call nephrocalcinosis, which is a calcified kidneys. I talked with the doctor and he said, uh, you know, there was really nothing we could do except you can stop taking all the calcium. I decided let's try it and see. And I learned what my limitations were. I couldn't continue with not taking medication uh, for this condition. I, I, I had to do something. Desperate for answers, Craig searched the internet and found the Hypoparathyroidism Association, where he was able to learn about clinical research being done and was even part of a clinical trial. One of the requirements, a genetic test. And that's when I was diagnosed with ADH1. Finally, somebody has diagnosed me because all my life, you know, I was told that they just didn't know. I did this study so I could better know what my condition um, was but it's also the kids that have this condition um, they won't go through what I went through. Making the diagnosis of ADH1 can be challenging. Patients can go a very long time without having the correct diagnosis be made. ADH1 is a form of hypoparathyroidism and many patients who have ADH1 don't actually get a specific diagnosis at the time that they're diagnosed as having a genetic or a non-surgical form of hypoparathyroidism. 
The way that I approach the diagnosis of ADH1 would of course start with careful biochemical testing. The low blood calcium, parathyroid hormone level, the phosphorus level, and looking at the 24-hour urinary calcium excretion. So to make the diagnosis of ADH1, definitively one needs a genetic test. And I'm happy to say that no charge genetic testing can be done through Invitae and its partner BridgeBio. I like to make sure that that individual has genetic counseling after that diagnosis is made, and family members should be offered testing with cal blood calcium levels and parathyroid hormone levels. And if there's any question at all, uh, they can undergo genetic testing themselves. So once the diagnosis is made of ADH1, it's very important for that individual to be seen by an endocrinologist who's comfortable with managing this disorder. If kidney stones, uh, kidney insufficiency, or chronic kidney disease have occurred, often patients benefit from seeing a, a kidney specialist or nephrologist. We don't have a treatment that addresses the base problem in ADH1. So the standard management is one where one must very carefully manage calcium and activated vitamin D uh, intake on these patients. If hypercalcemia occurs, kidney function can be damaged, and if high urinary calcium levels occur, this can lead to kidney stones, infections, and even uh, reduced kidney function. You know, as, as I, when I was younger, um, I assumed that everything was calcium related in my life. So I would over medicate, and I think that might have been, uh, attributed to my kidney problems that I have right now, being diagnosed early would have stopped that. So an ideal therapy for ADH type 1 would be a therapy that targets the calcium sensing receptor. And this could be a small molecule or a drug which changes the sensitivity of that receptor to the ambient calcium concentration it's in, both in the context of the parathyroid and in the kidney. So clinical trials are incredibly important in rare diseases like ADH type 1. They advance the science of the disease. They allow us to understand what a mutation does in the context of a, of a human. And they're critically important for developing and testing and validating and getting approved new and effective therapies for the condition. So to the newly diagnosed patient, I would say we're going to have a long-term good relationship working together to make sure that you don't experience the complications uh, of uh, too much treatment, that you're carefully treated and carefully monitored, and that you know as much as possible about the best care that you can take for yourself and for your family. Just make sure if you're concerned about a condition with your child, keep looking until you find somebody that'll listen to you, because that's what I had to do. I, I was stronger because of her. You know, because, uh, you know, she didn't let me let my disease uh, rule me. She's the reason why I am today. For more information on hypoparathyroidism, visit these websites. Of course, you can always get more information if you go to our website, thebouncingact.com.